Hey guys, today's video is just going to be a quick review over Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. So I don't want to go in too deep about this book because it can get a little spoilery. If you haven't read this book, you just, you really need to. It was a great book. So basically, if you don't know, this book is set in the future, so it's kind of dystopian. Its main year or setting is in the year 2044, at least that's what's on the back of the book. It takes place over about five or six years or so, the entire story does. And basically what it is, is the creator of this world, the Oasis, has died and left his fortune to one lucky person that can find his Easter egg by going on this quest through the Oasis to find the hidden Easter egg. Very early on while I was reading this, I kept getting the sense that I was in the Oasis and that I was a part of this world. It's really surreal and just amazing writing and you feel like you're right there with him. I couldn't help but think that the Oasis is basically The Sims on steroids. Like if you take The Sims games, personally I play Sims 3, I haven't gotten into Sims 4 yet, but if you take The Sims games and kind of add in virtual reality, make the worlds a little bigger, and add it to where you have complete control over your character, not just the limited range of controls that you have within the game, then you pretty much have the Oasis. So that being said, it was very easy to kind of connect with the Oasis and the fact that, you know, I'd rather be playing this video game than living in the real world. Everything happens in the Oasis. People work in the Oasis, people go to school in the Oasis. It seems like people have taken the virtual reality world and has made it their world. So also with the Oasis, it's kind of a lot of the stuff in this book is based around the 80s because the creator of the Oasis grew up in the 80s so he was obsessed with all of the 80s arcade games and video games and movies and books and TV shows so a lot of it has to do surrounding the 80s so being familiar with the 80s and being familiar with those games and those movies and stuff was really helpful with this book because there are certain things in it where you'll be reading and be like, oh yeah, I understand what that's talking about. But then there's some stuff in here that I was reading that I'm not familiar with because I'm not familiar with too terribly much. And it's like, you know, I bet if I knew what he was talking about, this part of this book would be a little bit more enjoyable. But that being said, the entire book was enjoyable because even though I didn't know firsthand some of the references, the author does such a great job of explaining everything and it's just, it's magnificent. The writing in this is just great. Personally, I'm not the kind of person that usually likes books with a lot of detail and a lot of writing that isn't really, you know, it's part of the story and yeah, you kind of need to know it, but at the same time, I just really don't care. That's usually how my thoughts with that goes. And this novel has a lot of details in it. A lot of this book was just detail after detail and descriptions. And I just, the way it was written was so well done that it didn't even feel like it was like descriptions or detail. And it just, it, it, it really makes you feel like you are the character, like you are inside of his head. And it's just, it's so well done and I loved every minute of it. I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads, so that right there, you know, it's, it's just a great book. I'm super excited that Ernest Cline has another book coming out, I believe, this summer. I haven't really found too much information on it, but if it's going to be written anything like this, I'm definitely going to pick it up. And it's just, I can't, I can't wait for that book. If it is anything like this, even if it's not like the same kind of subplot or whatever, as long as it's written as well as Ready Player One was, it's going to be amazing. Because just the writing in this was so beautiful. And I just, I can't say it enough. I loved this book. To kind of give a little bit more insight of how much I loved this book, for the past few years, the number one book that I always give people when they ask for book recommendations, when they really don't have any kind of idea of what they want to read, they just, you know, want a recommendation of some sort, is Room by Emma Donahue. I loved Room. I recommend it to anyone I can because it is a great book and I think that everybody should read it. It is very touching and just a very great story, but I'm pretty sure that Ready Player One 
has jumped to the top of my list for recommendations. I recommend this to anybody, especially if you're into the 80s and, you know, love all of 80s movies, 80s TV shows, old arcade games, old gaming systems. You're definitely gonna like this book because it is basically nostalgia central and it's just... Like I said, it is really well done and it's just really amazing. That's really all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've read Ready Player One, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts of it are. I'd love to talk with you about it. As always, links to everything in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.